Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 19 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, season 6. Hanging out, and getting ready to start playing around with, I think, it's time for some industrial craft. So you can see here, I've kind of, uh, you know, grown this little rubber farm right outside my base. It's really kind of the best method that you want to do. Uh, you want to make sure, like I said last episode or two, um, to have yourself one of those nifty little wrenches. Oh, you know what I need? Hmm. I might want to set up something cool this episode that'll help me out with one of those problems that I always have, but yeah, we'll get back to it. Um, so yeah, industrial craft. You're going to want a lot of rubber. You're also going to need probably a lot of iron. Let's see, I should have some wood in here. Cool. While I'm here, I can real quick get myself another tree tap. Awesome. Yeah, you're probably mostly going to need iron and rubber to get started. Some of the more advanced machines require other stuff, but earlier parts, mostly um, the costs are going to be associated with what I just said. So that's what I'm getting right now is a bunch of rubber. Cool. You're also going to need a good amount of copper. Not a huge amount, but enough to kind of get started. Enough being a completely arbitrary number, which I gave you no information about. Yeah, well, you'll get the hang of it. Don't worry. Industrial craft is pretty straightforward. We'll uh, have some fun building some nifty machines. A couple of them um, already exist, but there's a couple very cool machines that I would definitely want to have that are not available um, elsewhere, really. And there's a couple items I want to get as well that are going to require um, charging using the industrial craft system. So again, you know, it's kind of a good time to get started with it because I'm at the point where I want to get a couple things that are going to be really, really helpful uh, in the very near future. So let's get started, shall we? Let's take a look at the mod of industrial craft there we go industrial craft stuff so what's industrial craft all about well it's about creating power and using it for different machines uh, similar to thermal expansion some of the other stuff that we've seen thus far uh, we're going to need to generate power in uh, the terms of EU uh, energy units okay so let's take a look at a couple of the machines we're going to need to make uh, first off there's uh, machines that can create power we've got generators uh, which aren't too terribly hard to make, but then you can upgrade these generators to become a geothermal generator that runs off lava. Since we already have lava hooked up and running, we're probably going to jump straight into the geothermal generator world. Uh, you can also use a water mill, which will create very small amounts of uh, energy, but it uses water, so it's pretty cheap. Solar panels, which use uh, solar energy and also are um, you know pretty easy to make, but they create very small amounts of energy. Um, and then windmills, which uh, are, uh, you know, sourced by wind. But then once you get up to the higher end, you can get nuclear reactors, um, radioisotope thermoelectric generators, and some other just crazy, crazy stuff. So we'll get into that um, probably later on. We're not at the point yet where we want to make nuclear reactors. But don't worry, we'll definitely get there. Um, and then we have a bunch of machines available to us, which we'll definitely be starting to play with just a little bit. Um, and beyond those machines are some items and some other cool stuff. You can also, um, in the end, if you want to, um, get um, uh, quite a bit of ore um, replication. If you want to go crazy with it, you can um, go a little bit more deeply than doubling your ore output. You can get up to, I want to say it's like 2.6 ore, or almost, uh, eventually, I think you can eventually get up to triple. Um, we're not, it's not there yet, but it's something they're going to be adding soon. So let's take a look. First off, uh, we need to create power. And in order to do that, we're going to need the following items. Um, ignore this chargeable battery equals generator. That's a, an EI bug, I think. Basically, we're looking at this as the recipe to create a generator. We need an iron furnace, which comes from industrial craft. Iron furnace is simply a furnace with five iron plates. Plates are made by taking whatever metal it requests and adding a hammer to it, okay? Uh, and that's just in a crafting recipe grid. Your other option for making these plates is a machine, which we'll get to later. But for now, we're going to stick with this guy, all right? So like I said, we're going to need a lot of iron and copper, a lot of iron. Uh, we'll probably also need a little bit of tin, so I'll grab a stack of that. You can see I went mining between the last couple episodes. I'll grab a few pieces of gold just in case. Probably some coal and some redstone are going to get mixed in there, and that's probably enough to kind of get us started at the very least. So let's do some stuff, shall we? Uh, like I said, we're going to need a hammer, and those are easy to make. It's just five pieces of iron. Now the hammer has 80 uses. So if you go ahead and uh, let's say take 64 iron and turn them into iron plates, boom, that uses up 64 of those uses. So keep that in mind. The hammer is um, definitely going to be used. I just made a stack of iron plates. Yeah, we're going to need that much, believe it or not. For all the machines we want to make today, definitely. Let's jump into making um, our first generator, okay? So here's the iron furnace that we needed to make. That was easy. That was really easy, okay? But the battery, that's a little bit more difficult. Let's take a look at the generator recipe for a battery. Oh boy, tin item casings, redstone, and insulated tin cable, which looks tricky, okay? First off, let's see, do I have any rubber left? 
I don't really. Okay, so let's smelt up a few pieces of rubber here. Um, I happen to know that I'm going to need about, I'm going to say seven to get started. Well, you know, I could probably get away with six and really, if I want to be super efficient about this, which right now I do feel like being super efficient, I'm going to do that. So before we actually do anything, uh, I'm going to show you guys like a nice little trick to kind of get yourself started early. Let's go ahead and show you how to triple your resin output. We can smelt it to get one, like I told you earlier, or we can run it into an extractor, which requires three rubber. Let's make an extractor real quick. Okay, this guy requires a machine casing, four tree taps, and an electronic circuit, which is a little tricky to make. We need some copper cabling. Copper cable comes from uninsulated copper cable, which gets cut using a cutter uh, from copper plates. Sound complicated? Eh, it's not too bad, trust me. So first off, we need a cutter. That shouldn't be a problem. Next up, we need to get some uh, copper plates. So remember, we've got 16 uses left on this thing. Let's go ahead and use it all up. And then we'll cut it, and we'll get ourselves 32 copper cable. I know I'm going to need a lot of copper cable going down the line, so that's why I went ahead and made just a bunch of them all at once. Now, to insulate it, we just combine our copper cable with our rubber. And boom, copper cabling. Not so bad. We get ourselves an electronic circuit with two pieces of redstone and one of those iron plates. And then we need a machine casing, which is just iron plates in a square like that, almost like you were making a furnace, but with iron plates. Cool. And then uh, we need a little bit more wood. So let's request some. Uh, I'm gonna request, I don't know, 20 oak wood. While that's coming in, let's see, I think, ah, oh, there we go, good, we did have a bit. We'll get one, two, three, four of these. And then we should be able to make our basic machine casing, electronic circuit, and our tree taps. This will make an extractor for us. Now, typically your extractor needs to run with electricity, as I've told you in the past, right? We need to, uh, some electricity to run this thing. Well, don't worry. There's a little bit of a shortcut you can make if you don't mind being a little bit wasteful of some resources in exchange for others. You can use redstone to power machines directly. It's very costly in redstone, but to be honest with you, I have a lot of redstone laying around. I did do some mining, so I have a decent amount of it right now, and I don't have as much sticky resin. And even though you could say, hey, well, sticky resin grows back, redstone doesn't, uh, okay, fine. If you want to be super special and set uh, typical about it that's you know if you want to be very exact sure you can say that you know redstone does not you know come back and resin does but hey i'm trying to be a little bit efficient here with my sticky resin to rubber conversion cool so i've just tripled my rubber export that's pretty neat now let's build uh, the battery that we're going to need for our generator cool so that's not too bad i need another hammer though and i'm going to get a couple pieces of tin and get my tin plates okay but i'm also going to need to convert those tin plates to tin item casings and you'll see that we get two item casings per plate and that's the same for all the metals so there's copper item uh, casings there's iron item casings that kind of stuff okay so let's get our generator going here what kind of generator do we want to have um, we want to have just a generic one for now so now i need some tin cabling so let's get some of that hammer it nope tin i'm sorry and then cut it. Cool. And then I can get my rubber. And now I should be able to make a battery. And then the battery, the iron furnace, and three of these iron plates give us our first generator. Cool. Very straightforward and simple. All right. I'm thinking, hmm, is there much more room I want to save here from any more machines that I might have on this line? Good question. Give me a minute to just kind of plan out my design here and I'll be right back. So this looks like a pretty standard design and I think it'll work for us. So while I'm at it, why don't I get myself a couple pieces more of copper cable. Now there's different types of cable available and you can see that they can each transmit a certain amount of energy. Insulated tin cable can only transmit up to 32 energy units per tick, where copper can transfer 128 energy units per tick. Similar to the way the um, energy cells here worked and the energy conduits, remember, uh, these guys can only transfer uh, certain amounts of energy. Now the difference between these two mods is that with uh, thermal expansion, it just doesn't transfer it if it can't whereas with uh, industrial craft you might burn up the cable and it'll actually be destroyed if you try to pass too much current through the cable so make sure that you're using the correct kind of cable i'm going to go ahead and use copper for most of my stuff early on but later on we'll definitely have to use um, some other kinds of cable such as gold and uh, maybe even uh, some high voltage cabling later on so this stuff can go all the way up to 2048 
EU Protec, pretty crazy. Or 8192 if you want to get really crazy with glass fiber cable. Uh, but we're not there yet. So let's, for now, just dig underground a little bit. And kind of get ready to plan out our design. So here's going to be um, our generator for now. We're probably going to replace this rather quickly and within this episode, okay? Uh, I'm actually going to steal this redstone out of here. I don't want this to run anymore on redstone. So I'm going to use a little bit of redstone to kind of give me a good jump start in rubber creation. And we'll start to see this energy thing um, decrease because it'll start running out of energy very quickly, okay? We can see the cables connecting down there. Cool. So let's get our generator up and running right now. What I'd like to do is break this thing. This is where the generator is going to go for the time being. Um, energy is going to be created in the generator, sent down the line, and connected into the um, extractor, which you can see is already running a little bit low. Let's get it going. How do we run the generator? Well, we're going to need some coal, or anything that burns, really. Hey, there we go. Now our energy supply is building back up. Perfect. So we're able to run our extractor. Very cool. I like it. Let's build some other machines. Um, one thing I'd like to um, probably build is um, a metal former. So let's make one of those. Now those unfortunately are a little bit more complex in the recipe. Uh, the metal former requiring all kinds of crazy stuff like a toolbox which needs bronze item casings and then we're also going to need some coils which require uh, iron and uninsulated cable. So what I'm going to do is craft all this stuff off camera and then come back to show you it in action. All right, I think I did that all right. Let's find out if I did. Uh, checking real quick, we've got one of you, we've got one of you, we've got some of these guys, and we've got some of this. Cool, a metal former. That was easy, right? Yeah, it was easy because you weren't here. Uh, let's go ahead and place this guy right down here on the line. Now the metal former is nice in that no longer do I really need to use the forge hammer and the cutter here. Uh, you can see some internal power building up. Now it's going to slowly build up power because remember this machine is actually using some energy right now. Um, and we're only producing 10. Um, also keep in mind that there's sometimes a bit of energy loss that runs along the cable. I'm not sure if that's disabled in this version or not. But keep in mind that basically the longer your cables are, the more um, energy loss there might be. So keep that in mind. So how's the metal former work? Well, it's got a couple modes here. Extruding mode, which basically makes copper cabling, or any kind of cabling for that matter. So you put the material in, it's going to process that material, and instead of having to hit it with the hammer and then cut it with the cutter, you're going to get uh, the material straight up from uh, the metal former here. So you can see we got three uh, copper cable here instead of just two that we would have got with uh, a cutter. So it is even a little bit more efficient um, sometimes. Not everything is more efficient, but definitely sometimes. Okay, Or you can hit it with the hammer, the rolling machine method, and uh, that'll work the same way as hitting it with the hammer. Okay, That one is not more efficient. It's one for one still. So same pretty much uh, standard principle. But there's certain items that we have to run through this metal former that can't be made with uh, the forge hammer or the cutter. Um, so those are basically your options. And then cutting mode acts like a cutter. Uh, so extruding is hammer plus cutter where uh, rolling is hammer and cutting is cutter. Pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and uh, decide that coal is a very um, inefficient power source and go with something a little bit nicer. Because just like throwing coal in a furnace, uh, you might need a very small amount of energy and it's going to burn up just an entire chunk of coal because, um, you know, that's how furnaces work, that's how generators work. It's kind of the same thing. So let's upgrade that guy, shall we? Geothermal generator. But before we do that, we're going to want to get ourselves a wrench. This is the Industrial Craft 2 wrench, and it's very nice and handy. Uh, you're going to need to use this to pick up your machines. If you break your machines with a pickaxe, it's going to destroy the machine. You might get back one of those basic item casings, but you're going to have a bad day, so don't do that. Uh, Right-click it, and you'll get your generator back. Cool. Let's go ahead and create a geothermal generator. That's not too hard to make. Some iron item casings and some glass, but we're going to need an empty cell. How do we make an empty cell? Well, we take a tin plate and we run it through an extruder. Okay, that sounds fine. So while I can go ahead and make these plates, it is also slower to run it through the machine um, instead of running it through um, the hammer. So it's up to you. If you want to use the resources, it's faster. If you want to use the machines, it's slower, but it really only uses energy instead of um, using the iron for the cutter and the forge hammer. So it's kind of up to you. Um, I don't feel like waiting because I'm uh, impatient. So I'm running my tin plate through a metal former though because I have to in order to get empty cells. So we've got our tin plate and now we should be able to make a geothermal generator. You, you, you guys and some glass, which I should have right here. Cool. Geothermal generators run off lava. Neat. Now, here's an option, right? We could go ahead and uh, just 
make these geothermal generators and hook it up right here and run the power directly. Or we could create an energy storage unit similar to the thermal expansion um, hardened energy cell, which can store energy. That's what we're going to do. I would like to make, um, there's several tiers of, um, let's see if I do, well, there's several tiers of energy. Let's go ahead and just do it like this. Uh, you can get your bat box, which is your lowest form of energy. Okay, This guy is pretty basic, doesn't store much energy. I want to go with the second tier, which is the CESU. This guy requires some bronze um, and some advanced rechargeable batteries, which are items that can store energy for you. Uh, it does require a bit of lead dust or pulverized lead and some sulfur dust. Don't worry, we can get our hands on that pretty easily. And some copper cables and some more bronze item casings. So I'm going to go ahead and get this guy crafted up and ready. And then when I get back, I'm going to have to talk to you guys about energy because we can't just pump out 128 EU per tick into machines like the metal former, which can only accept 32 EU per tick. That would be bad because the machines themselves would explode. So I'm going to show you guys how to convert your energy down so that it doesn't blow things up. All right, guys, so just so you know, sulfur dust is found underground as world gen for railcraft, uh, but you have another option for sulfur. Um, it's uh, created by a thermal expansion. You can uh, pulverize nether quartz or, or nether rack for a small chance at sulfur, or if you want a higher chance at getting sulfur, you can pulverize a blaze rod, which will give you a 50% chance at getting some sulfur in there. So throw a couple of blaze rods into a pulverizer, you've got it, or maybe even um, throw a stack of nether rack in there and you'll occasionally get some cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and get our CESU. All right. So uh, advanced batteries should be good to go. Nice. I was hoping that would be that easy. And then I need five bronze plates. That shouldn't be too bad. These guys go here and would I use all my copper cables? That's possible. We'll make that many for now. Got to love these crafting benches that you can walk away from and come back to, and it keeps all the items in. CESU, ready to go. Now, in order to get this to work, we need to, like I told you a minute ago, convert our power. So for that, we're going to need a transformer. Uh, so different machines can accept different amounts of EU. Okay. Um, for example, our geothermal generator, it produces 20. So we have no problem running our machines. But machines like uh, the extractor and the metal former can only accept 32 EU per tick max. Any more energy going into that machine at once is going to cause it to explode. Okay. Now, um, explosions might be disabled at the moment in the, um, you know, currently because they're kind of working on IC2 and making changes to it, but we want to plan for the future. So your best bet is to make sure that you do everything right. Otherwise, eventually, you know, it might not be disabled and you might have some exploding machines. Might be a rough time. Okay. Some machines, not too many, but some machines like the induction furnace, which I hope to craft this episode, uh, can accept up to 128 EU per tick max. And other ones, um, some of the more really advanced machines like the mass fabric creator can take up to 512. So keep in mind that um, not all machines accept 32, but most of them are 32. So we need to down convert this energy. And for that, we need a transformer. Okay, transformers aren't too hard to make. Um, basically, uh, you can see on the tooltip here what they convert to. So um, an LV transformer, which is the one we want to make here, converts from 128 down to 32. Or it can convert up from 32 up to 128. Up to you which way you want to go, um, but in this case we want to convert down because we want to make sure our machines are only getting 32 EU per tick. So it's pretty easy. Couple of these insulated tin cables and some wood and then a copper coil. Okay, so let's make it. I just need some iron and some copper to get our copper coil. And then we might have everything else we need already. Uh, close. I just don't think we could shift click it. There we go. LV transformer. Nice. So let me show you guys how this is going to work. Okay, LV transformers, copper cables, and we're going to need our wrench. Let's come down here. So basically, remember, um, copper cables can transfer 128 EU per tick. The CESU outputs at 128 EU per tick, but then we're going to want to down convert with an LV transformer to 32 so that our machines don't blow up because exploding machines is not a good time. Okay, I'm going to choose this position right here to place my LV transformer. Okay, so how does this thing work? The LV transformer gets placed like so. Okay, um, now you'll see that there's two different sides of this thing one with a yellow side, and one, the others, all five other sides are white. Okay, 
So what that is, is the yellow side is the one that's accepting higher voltage input. So this is the one that the 128 is going to come into. If you need to rotate this, just right click on the block face where you want the yellow side to face. Okay, I want it to face this way, the way I'd originally placed it, so we're in good shape. The CESU, on the other hand, has one face with a dot on it and all the other faces do not. That's the energy output face. Every other face is going to have energy coming in. So we want this thing to actually output its energy down into the cable below it. So in order to do that, we have to either click on it from the bottom, but getting down there can be tricky, or you can shift click, and what that'll do is it'll force it to face the opposite direction from the face that you clicked on. So by shift clicking the top, we made it face down. If we shift clicked on this side, it would make it face that way, okay? Shift click on this side would make it face this way. Regular right click would make it face the direction that you click on. Okay, so we're going to get it face downwards. So this guy is currently storing zero out of the potential 300,000 EU that it can store. Cool. We've got a metal former and an extractor ready to accept power. We've got the LV transformer here. We have uh, different options here. We can say, um, if you apply a redstone signal, step up the power. Otherwise, um, step down. But we want to have it always step down the power. So always convert it down from 128 to 32. So we're going to change that. Um, optional to change it, but just keep in mind if you apply a redstone signal nearby, it might reverse what you're trying to do. Cool. So far, so good. Now we just got to get that geothermal generator hooked up downstairs and run some cables up to the top. Let's do that now. So I'm thinking my first geothermal generator will go right here. We'll run some uh, lava into the back of it in a moment with some fluid ducts, and we'll run the power uh, straight up um, from here all the way up here, and we want to hook into the back of this thing. So let's get up there. That should be fine. Okay. Um, but there's one kind of problem. Let's get ready to run this, and then I'll show you where the potential problem could lie. Okay, so there we go. This guy is ready to run its power straight up and uh, interface with that thing and connect its power and do all kinds of cool stuff. But where's the problem? Well, the problem kind of connects in right here. See how um, these two things are connected? Maybe I'll even get in closer for a better look. Okay, um, basically what's happening is um, the energy is outputting here and it's going to go over and it's going to loop back in and it's going to spin around there a little bit. It doesn't really hurt that that happens. It's not the end of the world, but I usually don't like to see that happen. So I'm going to show you guys a nice solution to this. Um, you can actually um, use uh, paint to separate your cables. So we can make a paintbrush, which is pretty easy. It's just two pieces of iron and some wool. We're going to need, um, let's say, uh, two of those. So let's get some wool which you can see we have a lot of now, thanks to our sheep farm. And we should already have iron on us, so we should be good. And to paint things, we just need some, some color of dye. So uh, typically, I just go with uh, red or yellow dye. Let's see, I might have some in here. I have uh, orange, so that should be cool. And I guess you know what, I'll go with a green dye. That should be good, too. Let's cook that up real fast. Thank you, sir. So let's get our painters. These, like I said, are going to help to prevent those connections, okay? So a green painter and an orange painter. And the deal here is that basically um, two cables, uh, or cables will only connect to um, unpainted cables or painted color of the same color. So if we paint one of these green and we paint another one orange, they won't connect to each other. Neat, right? Um, but it will connect to unpainted cables like this. Cool. So uh, power comes up, hits the CESU, CESU can be charged, and then we've got all this stuff going on. Cool. How am I for fluid ducts? I've got four. Maybe I want to get some hardened glass. And some copper. Make a few more while I'm at it. Now, I'm not sure if you can connect. I guess you can. Cool. There we go. Nice. We've got lava going in here. And that lava is going to generate energy. It's going to send it up here. And once it gets up here, it's going to get stored in the CESU. So lots of lava coming in, getting stored in this guy. Looking good, right? Very cool. Let's come over here and see that we're, in fact, getting power awesome. So our CESU has energy, it's getting converted, and we don't have any explosions, which is kind of always a good sign. If things don't blow up, you did something right, and that's not too easy. 
So the next thing I want to make is a compressor, and luckily that's pretty easy to do. We just need a bit of stone, six of them to be exact, so let's request it. And uh, what a compressor does is it's going to be used in making some of the more advanced machines. So because I'm uh, kind of doing this later on in the game, I have the option to make um, some really cool stuff that I want to show you guys. So let's throw these things away. I don't really need them anymore for the time being. I'm going to put my compressor down on the line right here. That looks like a good spot for it. So what do I want to make with the compressor? Well, I want to make something using an advanced machine block. Advanced machines typically can accept more power and do cooler things. Um, you can use advanced machines for all kinds of nifty stuff like pattern storage and scanners and mass fabricators and thermal centrifuges and all this other crazy insane stuff that we'll definitely get to eventually. But to get this we need a machine casing, advanced alloy, which is made in a compressor with mixed metal ingots, uh, which is iron, bronze, and tin plates. Okay, And you get two of these mixed metal ingots per. Uh, the other thing we're going to need is some coal dust um, for the advanced machine because we need to make carbon plates which is again a compressor recipe, which eventually is just a cost of actually four coal dust. Again, the recipe there is a little bit uh, messed up. So let's take a look for dust. Do I have any coal dust? I could have sworn I had some. Really, no coal dust? I guess not. Okay, well, let's make some, shall we? Uh, the good news about coal dust is um, you can make it in uh, any of the machines that you want. Um, if I wanted to, I would probably do it right. Let's get ourselves a couple more of uh, these copper cable things. Let's get a little bit more copper. I told you you need a decent amount of this stuff. Luckily, now that we have a metal former going, we can make more of it, so that's kind of good. Where's my metal former? There we go. Make me a bunch of copper cable, would you, buddy? Much obliged. I'm gonna get myself a few more of these. And two of you, two of you, cool. Uh, let's get ourselves a macerator. Now, uh, you can use the uh, pulverizer, but I figured, hey, if I'm showing you all the IC2 machines, I might as well do things right. Yeah, let's do it right. So, uh, three flint. I asked for four. Oh, well, I'll live. So, uh, oh yeah, machine casing. Three of them. These guys, there we go, macerator. That's gonna go probably right here. Now the good news is because remember I said all of the white faces output the energy, I can place my macerator here and it's still gonna get power. Good. I'm gonna start macerating up my coal dust. And you know what, because I wanna get some sooner rather than later, I'm also gonna put some of the coal over here in the pulverizer and both forms of coal dust will work. Don't worry about it. The pulverizer, by the way, is a little bit quicker, but the cool thing about IC2 machines is they have these upgrade slots over here, and for the cost of more energy, you can make things run a little bit quicker. We'll definitely get to that later on once we're in better shape with energy. All right, now that we've got that going, let's get ourselves um, the next machine, which I want to make, which will probably be the induction furnace, okay? Uh, that's what I want to make with all this cool stuff. So let's get a few things. Uh, I'm going to put this bronze plate away. I don't need him, but I do need a little bit more copper so that I can do this. How many do I get for this? Four? That should be good. All right, so we need to hammer this out and some tin. Remember I told you I'd use these 64 iron? Yeah. So the induction furnace is really, really cool. Uh, it's a little expensive to make, but it's totally worth it. So I'm going to get my mixed metal ingots and start compressing them. There we go, compressor. Look at all these machines running. We probably aren't able to keep up with the power demand at this point, but I'm going to make a couple geothermal generators and probably have at least three or four of them down there, um, you know, for future use. While I'm waiting for that, I can go ahead and make an electric furnace. Just uh, add an electronic circuit and some redstone to one of those iron furnaces that we made earlier. So let's do that. Ta-da! Iron furnace. Redstone. These guys. Cool. And because I know I'm going to need one more piece of copper, I'm going to go ahead and get it. How's my coal dust doing? Oh, good. And I got a little bit of sulfur from pulverizing coal dust. There you go. Another tip for making sulfur. I'm going to go ahead and make these guys into raw carbon fibers and raw carbon mesh and drop them in the compressor. Cool. So I've got my advanced alloy. I need some of these guys. 
and I've almost used up my um, whole supply of iron plates. Can you believe it? I know, right? Told you I'd use a stack of it. All within an episode, a stack of iron. Can't go wrong. Okay, so uh, compressor, you're almost done with your first piece. Let's wait for the second. There we go. There's the second. So we turn this guy into an advanced machine by putting the carbon and the advanced alloys. And then we upgrade the electric furnace to one of my favorite blocks from industrial craft, the induction furnace. Now remember, this guy can accept up to 128 EU per tick, which is the reason I left the spot here. So this cable and this cable are running at 128. It hits the transformer, and everything else is hitting at 130 or is hitting at 32. So we pop this guy down. He starts building up some internal power. Now the cool thing about the induction furnace is you can cook two things at once. And you might be looking at it and saying, "All right, where's the progress bar?" Come on. Wow, this thing takes a long time. This thing is slow. Yes, it's a little bit slow until it's built up some heat. Okay. Now, um, as it um, cooks things, it's going to uh, slowly but surely build up heat, and you'll notice the progress bar running faster and faster. Now, this thing actually uses quite a bit of energy to do its cooking. Um, but what we can do is a nifty little trick. Take a look at this. If we apply a redstone signal here, and you'll see that it's already lost its heat because we uh, stopped running the machine. Uh, let's go down here and apply a redstone signal to the back of this thing. Which, again, remember I kind of told you you want to be careful with redstone signals? That's kind of why I wanted to make sure that um, thing was set up properly to not accept a redstone signal. Also over here, redstone behavior can occur. Right now, the redstone behavior is set to nothing, which means redstone won't affect the CESU in any way. But this thing could be set to uh, not output energy if it's receiving a redstone signal, so be careful with that. All right, so your induction furnace, when receiving a redstone signal, will constantly heat itself up. This uses a very small amount of energy, one EU per tick. It'll keep it heated, but don't worry, it's very worth it. Why don't I show you what this thing runs like once we get up to 100% heat. All right, guys, so while I'm waiting for that to heat up, there's one thing I'd like to do. Uh, with all my mining that I've done and a little bit of uh, mob killing that I've been running around doing, I got myself a decent amount of essence. So uh, I'm going to throw these goggles of revealing in here and see if I get lucky with an enchant. V discount 5% was already there. Fire protection 4. Really? Fire protection 4 just loves me, doesn't it? I hate you. I hate you and everything you do to me. Okay. Well, still no luck on uh, any good enchants, but oh well. What are you going to do? I guess I'm just really unlucky. All right, let's take a look at the um, macerators done. Cool. I'll take out the coal dust. Probably just toss this in here for now. And take a look at the induction furnace. Ah, good. Fully heated up. So what's this thing look like when it's fully heated up? It looks like that. Cooks things very, very quickly, like less than a second, and two at a time. So it's really a nice heating system for cooking up anything you want to cook. Cool, right? I love it. So that is the induction furnace. That's most of industrial craft, uh, at least the early game stuff. There's plenty of late game stuff like I told you about, but we'll have to wait a little bit until we can get there. For now, though, we've hit the wrapping up point for the episode, so we've got a lot of industrial craft infrastructure built, which I'm happy about. Next episode, I'd like to come back and make a couple nifty and cool items that we can use within the CESU and charge them up. So uh, I'd like to make something that can help me travel a little bit better than I already can. We'll have to take that next time, though, guys. For now, it's Starwolf 20 wrapping up time, so hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and take it easy!